All of the cells in our body require a constant healthy stream of oxygen-rich blood. But risk factors like smoking, aging, and a poor diet can cause severe problems in our arteries. They can become clogged up with sticky plaques made of fat, cholesterol, and other nasty deposits. This causes the arteries to harden and narrow, reducing the blood flow and starving the limbs of oxygenated blood. Doctors call severe cases critical limb ischemia, and it kills half of its victims within five years. The worst affected areas are usually the toes and feet, and it isn't pretty. It can cause burning pain, skin ulcers, and gangrene, confining people to their beds. The standard treatment is surgery to remove the blockage, using lasers or cutters to destroy the deposits, or miniature balloons to expand the narrowed arteries or bypass surgery to give the blood a different route around the blockage. But some blockages occur in hard-to-reach places, or the patient is just too unwell for an invasive procedure. In fact, almost a third of sufferers of critical limb ischemia have no options for treatment, and most of those patients end up needing to have their limb amputated. But there could be another way. New research might be able to restore the supply of blood to deprived limbs by encouraging new blood vessels to grow. The first is gene therapy. By inserting genes that promote blood vessel growth into a virus and delivering this to the cells that form the inner walls of the arteries, researchers hope to stimulate new blood vessels to grow around the blockage and into the oxygen-starved sites. Although this therapy has helped wound healing, it hasn't yet reduced the time between CLI diagnosis and amputation in clinical trials. A more promising option is to extract special cells from the patient's bone marrow or peripheral blood and inject these into the affected areas. Amongst these cells are the immature blood vessel cells called endothelial progenitor cells or EPCs. Researchers hope that these cells will migrate to damaged tissues and blockages and trigger the growth of new blood vessels. Early clinical trials have shown cell therapies like this to be safe and effective for wound healing, but have not yet reduced the likelihood of amputation. To get better results, researchers are trying to increase the concentration of EPCs. Doing this in early trials has reduced pain and increased the distance that patients can walk. If doctors can regrow the blood vessels and revitalize blood-starved tissues, then they might just be able to save a patient's life and limb.